Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whichever time zone you're in. Um, I'm going to share my screen now. I've got about uh, 10 slides, uh, which I hope you can see now. Um, that I'm putting on full screen um, about the college, a brief introduction. And as um, Ellen said, there'll be time later on to, for you to ask questions. So um, if you want to put some questions in the chat as I speak, that'd be great. We'll look at them and make sure we address them in the q and in, in, towards the end of the hour. Um, this is a picture in the background of our two main buildings on the left, the Worthington building, and on the right, the Jackson building. And what we're trying to do at Ribbon College is to build a community of scholars with very much a focus on interdisciplinary research, addressing modern challenges. And you've got my name there. I'm the head of Ribbon College. Um, at Ribbon College, the head is called the president. I've been an academic in Oxford for the last 33 years. I've run a research institute. Um, I've run a department. And um, I'm now um, helping to um, set up this brand new college. I've um, lectured on MSc courses, on centers for doctoral training, and in my um, career as an Oxford academic, I've supervised, I don't know if you can see me on my screen, but I'm in my university office here, and these dark blue objects there are 70 uh, DPhil. We don't call them PhDs in Oxford, we call them DPhil uh, theses. So um, I've absolutely loved working with graduate students and I'm really looking forward to working with you in our initial cohort starting in October. So um, to uh, go to the next slide, um, if I can, here we are. So why do we have this brand new college in, in Oxford? Um, well, most of you I'm sure um, are aware that uh, Oxford was ranked as the uh, best uh, university um, in, in September 2020 for um, the fifth year running. And really 60% uh, roughly of the assessment of um, these ranking universities is on research and 40% on undergraduate and graduate teaching. Um, and really the reason why we're in that uh, number one place in the world is primarily because of our graduate students. Graduate students are the engines of Oxford research success. And what we want to do is to increase the numbers of them because as we're growing the university, as we're growing the labs, as we have new academics, we need to be able to um, have new students for those new academics. And therefore we need to increase the number of graduate students. And the only way we could do this, and in the q and I'm very happy to explain why that was, was not to keep adding students to existing colleges, but to build a new um, college. Um, <clears throat> and um, so, um, so to do that, sorry, I'm finding a problem uh, to move my, my slide along normally. Um, okay, let's see if I can, um, Zoom is constantly changing things, I found it, it's down here. Um, so we have this program that we're gonna have of intellectual activities, both within academics in Oxford, but also we'll bring in a lot of visitors um, in the college. Um, Oxford, as I'm sure you know, has got a very vibrant um, spin out culture. In other words, academics, their students and their postdocs spin out companies. Um, it was um, 20 last year. Uh, we'll be bring them back to talk to us about what it means um, spinning the research out of the lab into the commercial arena. So lots of exchanges. And as I'm sure you know, we have four main themes in the college. Artificial intelligence, machine learning is one, environmental change, cellular life. And the fourth one is a new one, ethics and values. And we have two strategic areas as well, public engagement with research and um, also innovation entrepreneurship. And this exchange will be facilitated by TED like talks, seminars, workshops, and so on. And once a week, we'll be going for dinner in the University Museum, uh, preceded by a TED like talk and then interactive um, over dinner between courses. We'll continue the conversation over the issues that have been raised during um, dinner with the dinosaurs. So, this is the University Museum. You can see some dinosaurs. Here is one here. And 
there's what's called fine dining uh, that can be organized. We'll be doing it every Thursday evening. There will be a different uh, talk to prompt the conversations every Thursday and every graduate student um, will be invited free of charge to come and attend this dinner with dinosaurs uh, on a Thursday evening. Uh, and it's a fantastic environment um, for these debates, for these interactive exchanges, for quizzing the speaker after you've had um, an hour with a speaker or could be several speakers in the University Museum Lecture Theater, which is somewhere around here. And um, who are the sort of people that we want to engage with in these discussions? It's people like you. You'll either be somebody registering for a DPhil, a doctoral program, or coming for a master's, an MST, an MSc, an MA. And the reason why you want to join us is that you want to be a pioneer. Um, regardless of what happens, you will always go down in the annals of Oxford University as part of that first cohort of Ruben Core students. Uh, and you'll have a unique opportunity to shape the culture and ethos of our community. You'll be the sort of student that likes sharing their knowledge, exploring alternative perspectives, learning from other related disciplines, uh, very open-minded, but also very willing to talk about your own work. And you'll participate in this um, specially crafted bespoke program of intellectual activity, academic support, professional guidance and mentoring that we will offer at uh, Rubin College. And we will start, if you look right at the top, the inaugural lecture, uh, Wednesday, the 13th of October, will be the story of the development of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, the vaccine that's literally been used for tens, probably hundreds of millions of people um, all the world around now. Um, and it was co-designed by one of the Rubin Fellows, Professor Teresa or Tess Lamb, who was um, in the uh, front page of the Daily Mail, um, one of the newspapers in this country uh, back in uh, November 2020, the back page of the Nature Journal uh, about where she worked, and she will tell us the story of the development of that vaccine uh, as we open our academic program uh, at the beginning of October in just a few months' time now. Um, we will think about mostly, but not uniquely in the first term, about COP26, which is being held in um, Glasgow in November in the UK. Uh, Freddie Otto, one of our fellows, is very active in the preparation for that. She is involved in writing various documents for the IPCC, the Intergovernment Conference on Climate Change. Um, and she will report back on the COP26 discussions um, at one of these um, Thursday evening uh, discussions and presentations. Uh, we'll also be having an introduction to climate science. Um, we have a professor who's driving Oxford's uh, policy in trying to get to net zero. Uh, we'll talk about water development in the context of climate change. We won't just talk about uh, climate change in the developed world, also in Africa. We'll have a discussion on the ethics of why should Africa have to decarbonize at the same speed as the developed world. Um, I don't know what the answer is, but we'll discuss it. Uh, one of our AI machine learning fellows will talk about his work on uh, water pumps in Africa. So these are the type of multidisciplinary talks we'll be having in the first uh, uh, term. In the second term, we'll start talking more about um, what's happened in the last year in terms of the pandemic and think about the technologies that have been developed as a result of trying to cope with the pandemic. Test and trace is a, a big one in this country. Um, wearable devices and AI, which is part of my own research group, looking at global sustainability within the context of the post-pandemic world. We have a very big day on March the 8th, which is the closest uh, Thursday to March the 10th on women's science and business, linking it to the Women's Day um, with some speakers we're trying to attract. You can see their list here. And then we'll also be talking about emerging infectious disease, uh, the psychology of living through a pandemic, uh, some colleagues of ours in the Department of Psychiatry uh, have run the largest study so far in the world on links between um, COVID and psychiatric issues. So that, these are some of the things we'll do in the second term. And then in the last term, we'll think about AI for good. And we'll run 
Um, and said of events around technologies that we all, even if you're not an AI machine learning student, even if you're a philosophy student or a medical students, uh, most of you will have used smartphone apps. Some of you may have used wearable apps. Can we use them, turn them from what they are, consumer products such as the Fitbit and so on, to deliver healthcare? So we'll have a networking event where we bring some of those spin out companies I've mentioned to you um, at the beginning who are developing apps and machine learning software within Oxford ecosystem. Uh, we'll have a seminar on the type of healthcare challenges that we're trying to solve both in developed and developing countries um, using these technologies. A film night where we look at what Apple does when it launches uh, the Apple Watch or the Apple Heart Health Study. Uh, Dragon's Den, if you want to set up one of your own businesses to do this. Uh, um, and we hope our MBA uh, students will help write the business plans with their fellow students. Uh, we're not just going to uh, be spending time in these seminars and workshops, however. We'll also be going out and about. Glam in Oxford is gardens, libraries and museums. Um, and these are actually some of the events we are uh, piloting this term. Um, one on immortal visualizations about um, books that present compilations of biological data from thousands of individuals. Um, and we'll having a conversation in which there'll be an artist, a scientist, an ethicist, a librarian to explore these questions. That's actually happening next week. We'll be going to the Oxford Botanic Gardens plant collections to talk about a sense of nature with the deputy director and one of our fellows from environmental change, uh, Professor Emily Flashman, uh, I beg your pardon, it's actually Professor um, Esther Becker who will be uh, doing, um, no, it is Emily Flashman on the sense of nature and Esther Becker on immortal visualizations. Got it right second time round. Um, we also plan to go out and about, um, have a day out, um, uh, and this is the second bullet point you've got here, uh, a kind of field trip uh, to see the Jenner House where vaccination started. Um, it's about 60 miles away from Oxford. We'll be going uh, to the neighboring Barclay Castle as well at the same time. Another trip to the National Museum of Computing and the grounds of Bletchley Park where all the code breaking work and in imitation game that you may have seen in the cinema took place. That's about 40 miles away. Um, and we'll take the whole family, including children of the fellows, postdocs, students, etc. As I mentioned uh, above here, we will be talking as well to um, um, some of our industry insiders. We have a member of advisory board who runs a big uh, venture capital fund who will come back and chair this for us, talking to uh, guests from the Gates Foundation, a chief scientific officer, a legal attorney, a researcher, medical writer, solutions architect. So the kind of careers that you might think about after you've done your master's or your DPhil at Ruben, we'll be meeting with people from outside who can come and talk to you about your next career move if you don't stay in academia. So as you can see, a varied program. I'll stop sharing my screen. I've taken just a bit over 10 minutes. If there've been some questions, please write them in and we'll take them in the Q&A. Um, we are putting together, as I say, an exciting program and um, we're really looking forward to uh, doing all these things with you when, after you've arrived in October.